Hi, I'm Stefan Hammond with Telecom Asia, and we're here with Kanesh Kachel. He's Director of Industry Ecosystem Engagements for Huawei. Can you tell us about Huawei's 5G new radio and give us some use cases and their benefits? Huawei started focusing on 5G initiatives uh, at the start of 2009. Uh, to emphasize it further, last three years we have been investing almost $600 million each year. Uh, and we have developed a 3,000 member strong expert team focusing only on 5G key developments operating out of 11 R&D centers globally. Now at Huawei, we don't see 5G as a only technology shift. We see that 5G is going to enable a complete ecosystem shift. Now when I talk about an ecosystem shift, we are talking about two, three dimensions, including ubiquitous coverage solution in diverse environment, which connects people to people, people to things, and things to things. At the same time, we talk about enabling the industry development by connecting millions of devices uh, being addressed through the same technology platform. Lastly, it's about enabling ultra low latency kind of communication which makes the mission critical kind of services and other government services uh, to be brought live in the same environment. Now we recently concluded the second phase of uh, testing for 5G new radio, uh, building on further from the first phase of 5G new radio testing where a lot of core network features were uh, developed. We combined that with new features like FOFDM, uh, massive MIMO, new feature set, new codes, new parameters. And what it allowed us is uh, firstly, first in the world, 200 megahertz kind of carrier, delivering almost 32 Gbps kind of speed. Uh, to put it in perspective, you could download an HD movie in less than a second. This is enabled in a new frequency band, which is specifically being identified for 5G new radio rollout. Moving on to the connected car concept, what we did differently this time was that we connected uh, multiple of uh, cars, delivered almost 100 channel 4K videos to these cars which were mobile. At the same time, we were able to extend the controlling facilities or the functionalities of this car to almost 30 kilometer away to a driver who was controlling the functions of this car. Now lastly, for industry engagements and involvement perspective, we were the first ones to uh, complete the interoperability testing for device and the pipe, therefore enabling a lot of industry-based use cases uh, for the future development of 5G. Now, all these cases kind of reassures us that 5G as an ecosystem shift would very soon become reality and will lead to a lot of commercially viable use cases uh, to, let's say by 2020, we will see all these things commercially available. One of the use cases that is particularly interesting for 5G new radio is that Huawei teamed up with China Mobile and SAIC Motors in uh, Beijing and we kind of uh, enabled their concept card called IGS with remote connectivity for their concept cars. How does the Ocean Connect IoT platform help to enable green IoT solutions? So Huawei's Ocean Connect solution is an end-to-end -end innovative solution, which in three parts is enabling connectivity of devices, which can be coming from typical 4G, 5G, 3G layers, as well as coming from an IoT gateway itself, therefore making it access agnostic. At the same time, these terminal sensors that you enable through this platform uh, kind of gets integrated with the application that the users are going to use seamlessly. And the platform in itself kind of guarantees the quality of services uh, to a kind of carrier grade environment. Secondly, through this solution, Huawei is offering the partners that are joining this ecosystem to have a kind of very, very secure environment, faster ability to deploy and make those use cases a reality. And a single one-stop solution for services as well as the integration of their use case. To drill down further, I mean, let's consider a case of uh, smart city lighting. 
which is one of the integral part of smart city initiatives which lead to greener objectives of a particular municipal body. The smart city lighting is, helps you save further energy by improving on the control that the municipal body or the electricity distribution companies will have on the lights whereby you can remotely switch on, switch off, remotely control the brightness of those lamps, thereby saving energy by enabling on-demand city lighting. Second example is in China, in the city of uh, Shanghai and Beijing, where uh, there, there is a huge amount of population. We have deployed with our partner Smart Bike Solutions, which addresses a particular segment of uh, small distance commuters, thereby completely uh, removing the need for any kind of mechanical vehicle requirement to cover a small distance, which leads to less traffic congestions and less uh, carbon emissions and uh, controlling the pollution. So through this simple platform of Ocean Connect, uh, as we know more and more uh, government bodies are driving greener plans through their connected city, it gives them the ease of access and integration and guarantees the quality of service through the, this particular platform to enable all these green solutions. Huawei's smart city framework revolves around narrow band IoT. Tell us about how this technology fits in with the infrastructure of smart cities. To address this question, let's first understand what narrow band IoT as a technology is expected to deliver. The word narrow band means the carrier size is very small. Therefore, it will enable a wider area of coverage. When it enables a wider area of coverage, the number of connections getting on the network is going to be multiple of hundreds and millions. Now, when you have so much of connections, which are enabling utility services, for example, these connections are always going to be on, always transmitting, right? Therefore, the power consumptions of these devices, terminal sensors, have to be very, very low, which in turn guarantees that these devices, which are going to be remote, even if in an uh, urban environment, they need to have at least 10 plus years of battery life. And all these, since we are going to have millions of devices, terminals per square kilometer, the cost of each of these unit of devices has to be very, very low. Lastly, the most important part, although they are not people, they are things and they are machines, at the same time, they also expect the same kind of carrier grade quality of service to be delivered so that the interactions and the services that they enable in a digital environment are user friendly. Now, Huawei is developing a lot of partners to realize the solutions through this NB-IoT technology, which is not just limited to smart homes, smart cities, smart parking. It also includes smart waste management, smart utilities like water and electricity management. And it keeps on growing each day as we speak. There are so many use cases we are testing. One very interesting example is Huawei partnered with China Unicom and Disneyland in Shanghai where we are managing their parking space. What it simply does is allows you to find a parking space quicker and in a very efficient manner. What it has impacted is it has reduced congestion near the parking area. Therefore, better traffic control, lesser emissions, lesser pollutions. So such innovative use cases which work right to the last mile are being enabled through NB-IoT technology and that is really what is it is expected to do.